So, uh, well. so uh, we're going to go for the presentation of um, Ahmed Elias uh, Ibrahim. Uh, he's from Somalia and he's going to have two presentations. Um, and uh, he holds a bachelor degree in medicine and surgery and um, a postgraduate fellowship uh, in pediatrics and child health. And he works for MSF in the Baidoa project in Somalia since 2019. And he's very interested in pediatric infectious disease and, and, and global health and point of care ultrasound. So I'll let uh, Ahmed Iliad uh, go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, indeed, uh, it's a great honor and pleasure to be here today uh, to deliver and present uh, interesting cases in the next few minutes. Today, I would like to present two cases. In the first case uh, is uh, immunoglobulinosa disorder in a four-month-old infant uh, diagnostic challenge. Uh, actually, this case uh, reported uh, this case report highlights three important uh, things. The first thing is the disease itself, as it's uh, uh, a disease uh, is a very rare to very rare condition to be seen in infants. The second thing is diagnostic challenge that we face it normally with the autoimmune skin disorders in the sitting without lab capacity for histopathology. And the third thing is the value of the telemedicine in the diagnosis and, 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 and treatment of similar conditions. In the beginning of this case, uh, I would like to give you a, a short introduction about the disease. Immunobullous disorder uh, is a heterogeneous group of diseases, including several uncommon skin disorders rarely seen in infants. Bullous lymphoid and liner uh, IgA bullous dermatosis are the most common uh, immunobullous disorders seen in children. The condition typically presents with variations of bullae, irritants, and surrounding erythema. The immunobullous skin diseases are uh, arise due to uh, pathogenic antibodies binding to protein uh, targets in the epidermis. Uh, in this case, uh, we're reporting a four-month-old uh, boy uh, is presented at our hospital by his mother with complaining of uh, diffused irregular skin erosions on face, chest, shoulders, and the scalp since the child had a 40 days of age. In the history of the present illnesses, the condition started when the infant was a 40 days old with uh, flaccid clear blisters on his left cheek. These ruptured to produce uh, each irregular shaped regions with thick crustas and pustules at the edge of the legion. Then the legion extend to present uh, in, uh, local, in, in different locations, including mucous membrane of the mouth and conjunctiva. There was no history of uh, maternal, uh, maternal skin diseases or pregnancy complications, as the mother mentioned, and the child was delivered at home and was previously healthy. In the past medical history, actually no significant normal pregnancy and the infant was uh, in exclusive breastfeeding. The only thing the family history they revealed that uh, there is present on uh, two older siblings present with similar complications at uh, 40 days old and died at uh, 40 days and two months and the unfortunate died at eight and four months old respectively. These three uh, different uh, pictures shows the child condition from the time of admission and the, after uh, we started the, uh, the course of treatment. The first uh, picture in the left side uh, showing, showing the child condition on the admission will present of ill-defined irregular shape regions. In the middle one showing the child after, uh, after uh, 14 days on, uh, on, on uh, systemic steroid and antibiotics with the local wound care. And the third one in the uh, left side showing uh, the child after four weeks, after four weeks with the uh, tabling breathing salon. The diagnosis of a skin disorder in sitting without lab, lab capacity for histopathology is a challenge. The gold standard diagnosis of autoimmune skin disorder is biopsy for pre regional skin for uh, direct immune fluorescence. In this case, uh, of in, the, in this case, the diagnosis of immunobullous disorder was made by on the clinical suspicion and the after dermatologist advice via telemedicine platform. In the plan of our management, initially we started with the IV antibiotic treatment with the chloroxylin for 10 days, then uh, tabling down to oral and oxygen caffeinic acid at uh, recommended dose. Then we did the local wound care by soaking the wound with the clean gauze and slice line for 10 to 15 minutes per day. And after sharing the case with the telemedicine expertise, the following diagnosis of immunobullous disorder made, and they recommended to start uh, building a salon, one milligram per kilogram twice a day for two weeks, then slow travel, 
at the third week of the treatment and after starting the, the, the tapering of the bleeding alone, the patient start to improve and the erosions start to heal. During that time, we maintain the regular breastfeeding for the infant. In conclusion, immunoglobulin uh, diseases are uncommon skin disorders rarely seen in infants. Most common clinical presentations is bullae, erosions, and surrounding erythema. The diagnosis of immunobullous disease in low resource setting is a challenging. This case highlights the importance and the value of telemedicine in supporting the diagnosis and management of unusual rare cases. Unfortunately, the patient didn't return back to the follow up at uh, week five, and this is one of our challenges that we we daily facing in Somalia. I, I'll go to the first, the second case, and uh, the second day case that I would like to present it today is a new with nastinum and uh, subcutaneous emphysema as a complication of measles. As we all know that measles is uh, one of global public health concerns. In Somalia, we are facing a catastrophic prolonged measles outbreak since 2021 up to date, and this continued outbreak caused by multi-factors, including low coverage vaccination, population displacement, and prolonged ongoing droughts as well as uh, COVID-19 pandemic. In this case, we in this case, we're reporting a eight, eight years old boy diagnosed with measles presented at our hospital with uh, fever, neck swelling, and eyelid edema one week after appearance of uh, macular macular skin rash. The patient had uh, unvaccinated history and two of his siblings was, uh, was diagnosed with measles at, uh, during his admission. On examination, patient looked unwell, febrile, chest examination done and revealed respiratory distress, tachypnea, respiratory rate was uh, 65 per minute, intercostal retraction, bilateral cavitation was detected during chest examination. Also, oxygen saturation on uh, room uh, air was 94%, and subcutaneous cavitation on one patient detected as well. The swelling progress involving the face, eyes, upper limbs, chest, and uh, scrotum. Uh, there was no sign of malnutrition for this patient. Uh, during uh, our uh, plan of admission, we did just X-ray at, uh, at the ER, and uh, unfortunately, we only have this uh, good quality X-ray film that makes the, uh, the, the, uh, too difficult to do a clean X-ray interpretation. But uh, X-ray shows the presence of extensive subcutaneous emphysema and sign of lymphoblastum. Uh, as you can see in the gray arrows, shows a gas outlining in the aortic arch. And the green arrows in the up, uh, upper left side of the chest showing the uh, gas outlining in the inner surface of the nostrum, and the the, low, the down there in the uh, lower left side of the chest, the uh, red arrows shows uh, continue the affirmative sign, and this all may indicate the presence of uh, extensive subcutaneous emphysema and sign of, of uh, new midnastrum. In the management, in the plan of our management, we did a simple. Uh, unique precutaneous needle, uh, needles uh, decompression to decrease the severity of subcutaneous uh, air by, by doing precutaneous catheterization in the emergency room. And then the patient was hospitalized uh, 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 with the supplementation oxygen, increasing saturation to 100%. Also, patient received uh, ampicillin 150 milligram per kilogram per day and colocillin 200 milligram per kilogram per day for two weeks. The patient improved progressively and was dis uh, discharged on day 14 after admission. That's all for my for the uh, two cases. And thank you. Uh, be before I do that, sorry, in conclusion for the first case, uh, in the second case over a period of th three months, uh, 80 cases of measles were treated at our hospital in 2021. Only one case uh, of new metanastrum and subcutaneous emphysema was reported. The little evidence that uh, uh, this complication have 6.4% uh, six, 6 uh, uh, globally uh, incidence rate, and the risk factor of this uh, complication mainly associated with uh, malnutrition and children under five years old. And uh, actually, our message is uh, this rare uh, complication of measles, which could be avoided by vaccination. This, uh, this is another case uh, example for uh, the importance uh, of the vaccination to prevent avoidable causes of death in childhood morbidity and morbidity in the lower resources area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ahmed. That was that was very good. And 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 both both cases are actually uh, on telemedicine. So the first one, we there was a report on several series of these cases in, in the past. 
And this complication referred to, to measles yeah, is uh, not that uncommon. So I had a question on chat for you for the first one. How was the pain management done for the baby during what seems to have been extensive wound care? How do you manage pain? Yeah, we and during that during the 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 wound care uh, uh, the dressing we we was to give the patient uh, all uh, ibuprofen after the uh, dressing, you know, to decrease the pain that uh, may uh, the child may feel. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks again for your presentations, uh, 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 and uh, you'll be available for 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 questions after.